In previous episodes, I've spoken a lot about the importance of statistical significance in the optimization phase. But what I haven't looked at in any detail is the walk forward phase. Now, the implications of poor statistical significance here are actually very different from those in the optimization. So you need to understand what these differences are, and that's what today's topic is going to be. And I'll also be answering a common question of what the ratio should be between the duration of your optimization phase compared to the duration of your walk forward phase. One question I often get asked is what the ratio should be between the duration of the walk forward phase and the optimization phase. And like so many topics around backtesting best practice, the answer once again is informed by using concepts of statistical significance in order to calculate this ratio. And so I'll be giving you advice on this later in the video. But first, let's remind ourselves about why we use two different phases in our backtesting process. So the purpose of each phase is very different. If we look at the optimization first, this is all about parameter extraction. In other words, extracting the best parameters from the optimization process. Now the purpose of the walk forward phase is quite different. And this is all about validation. So validating that the parameters that were chosen in this part of the process genuinely work on data that they've never seen before. And so the relationship between these two phases is that the parameters that are extracted from the optimization are then used in the walk forward validation phase. Now the period of data that we use for the optimization is what we call in-sample data. Because it's being used to determine those best parameters. And the data that is used for the walk forward phase, we call out of sample data because it hasn't been used. The important point here is that when you perform a walk forward, None of that out of sample data has ever been used to ascertain the parameter values that were used by it. If that were the case, then the test would be flawed. Now remember, it's the performance you obtain in the walk forward phase that will inform you about whether you can viably trade the system or not. Never use the results from here in the optimization phase to inform that decision. Because the in-sample data here has been used as part of the optimization process, it's a big mistake to then allow the results from this to inform you about whether the system is viable or not. The optimization phase, in fact, had one and only one purpose, and that was to help you extract the parameters that you then used in the walk forward phase. It's these walk forward results that will most closely represent what you would obtain if you traded those parameters in a live account, which is why it's these that should be used to make that decision. Now, if the walk forward results lose money, then that means one of two things. Either your system doesn't have an adequate edge, which means that the test has served its purpose and it's informed you about that, in which case you obviously shouldn't trade it in your live account. Or secondly, it might just mean that you didn't optimize effectively and didn't pay due consideration to statistical significance on all of the best practice that we've been talking about in the last six episodes. However, if your walk forward results are to your satisfaction and you're also confident that the results are statistically significant, do you start to trade with these parameters that you found in the optimization in your live account? No. Absolutely not. These parameters do not take any account of recent price action, and so they won't be optimized for current market conditions. So which parameters do you use? Well, click here to go to part 7.2 to find out.